Okay, I believe everything's working. So for the people on Instagram, say hello to the people on YouTube. For the people on YouTube, say hello to the people on Instagram. Um, we'll see if this actually works. <laughs> so, all right. Um, if anybody can hear me, give me a, a thumbs up or something. Oh, I got waves. I guess that means we're good. All right, um, this is going to be a relatively quick one today. Um, from Poland, hey, hello, Tomas. Um, not the usual mod stream. We're just going to do some quick unboxings because I got some new lenses that I'm excited about, and I want to share that with you guys. So first things first, the one that most people are waiting for. And again, I apologize if this doesn't translate well to Instagram. Yeah, I see the angle's pretty far off, but we'll, we'll make it work. Um, Tokina announced this lens. Oh, geez, let's see. Let me pull it up here. Probably over a year ago. Let me see if I can even find it in the, the history here. Uh, I don't know if I even did a post about it. No, maybe it was just that long ago. Oh, wow, yeah. Okay, so Tokina announced this lens in May of 2020. Um... They didn't say that it was shipping, you know, to their credit, they just said, hey, we're working on this lens. So fair enough to them. They never gave a, a, a ship date, but it is now shipping. And this is the first one, as far as I know, um, in the US. So let's take a look at it. I have not seen this. This is typical Tokina packaging. They always have the, the pouch, they have the, the blue zoom stick. Mid-range zoom lens. All right, there's just a bunch of different languages. Same thing over and over. So really all it's doing is telling you how to insert the zoom stick. <laughs> That's the instruction manual. Okay. So this is a little different. Normally, Tokinos came in sort of this complex folded cardboard mess. Um, I am really happy to see nice, nice squishy foam now. That's much better. in there no okay. yeah see that imprint that's perfect that's what you weren't getting with the cardboard before so glad to see that well done Tokina all right okay so this is an EF model I don't know if it even says it on the box it does okay I don't think the PL model is shipping just yet um, I think they started with EF. I'm not sure why. There she is. Well, it's a little heavier than I was expecting. Um, the size is really nice for what it is, but it is a little dense, I guess you could say. It's not bad, it's just... Hold on, let me make sure this is... Okay. Um, really nice finish. Nice anodizing all the way around. It's not painted like the Vista Primes, which I can't stand. Um, the only way to... I don't like the painted Vista Primes because they can get scratched up and they can get you know, wear and tear. And there's no way to strip it and re-anodize it. You'd have to, um, you'd have to sand off the paint, and then repaint it, which is time-consuming and messy. But this is a proper anodized aluminum finish, no paint. 
Um, the lens plugin. Oh, hey, hey, Daniel. CB full frame? No, this is Super 35. The mount will be user interchangeable. Typical of Tokina. They always use a nice, simple hole pattern. Ooh, that is nice. Really nice machining on this mount. Nice high speed finish. Um, I would assume that this is stainless steel. It looks like it. So very nice. No, no cheap aluminum mounts or anything like that. Um, yeah, this is Super 35 only. Uh, in fact, we had a couple people asking about specific coverage. So, I I don't know why they did Super 35. Um, I think every indication moving forward is that full frame is here to stay. So, I assume that this is targeted directly at, like, the Komodo crowd and... You know, everybody knows that Airy has their new Super 35 Alexa coming out. The one that has been rumored for five years now. Um, so we'll see about that. Um, also odd that they put a, a sticker here instead of just engraving it. I mean, every other marking on this lens is a mechanical engraving. Even the serial number badge. But then you've got a sticker. That's strange. That almost seems unnecessary. Like, why did they have to do that? But whatever, no big deal. That is neither here nor there. Um, you got plenty of holes for the zoom stick, but they're not all the way around. So the scales on this are pretty condensed. Uh, I believe the reason for that is that the gearing, the spacing between the gears, between this lens, the 11 to 20, the 50 to 135, all the other Tokina Cinema Vista. I mean, uh, Cinema ATX lenses have the same positional position gearing. We have two people from Poland. Guys, meet each other. Um, which is nice. You can swap between the Cinema ATX line and not have to worry about changing your gear position. But that does mean that this is all pretty condensed. So it has that segmented gear on the iris. They can easily have overcome that if they just made this lens bigger. They could have put the gearing farther back or the engravings farther forward, either way. But instead you have this segmented gear that only goes for maybe, maybe 80 degrees, if that. Um, and then it's just blank, or you know, not geared, so that they could be the, put the uh, aperture engravings. And then the same thing for the zoom stick holes. You've got one, two, three, four, and then no holes because they had to have the engravings. And one, two, three, four. Um, it is nice to see smart side and dumb side markings. Smart side is all white engravings. Dumb side is all this sort of fluorescent yellow, which I really like. It's a nice, nice clean, vibrant color, really easy to see in dark environments. So that's nice. Uh, I am glad that Tokina steered away from, for the most part, you still have white engravings here, fluorescent yellow here, blue here, yeah. but on some of their previous lenses it was just a, a rainbow of engravings, which was confusing and almost looked childish. Uh, it looked very consumery, not professional. So this is a, a, a nice refined version. I think they switched that up after uh, right around the time they released the 11 to 20 Cine version. That was sort of the, the catalyst for this new style of housing. And then they had the version 2 of their other, what was the mid-range zoom? I can't even remember. Cinema ATX, here we go. 16 to 28. That was the kind of colorful one, it had the big red band. Um, Yeah, and the 50 to 135 had two versions as well. The, the former version was the kind of childish looking one, it looked like a toy. Um, but the second one is this same styling, same gearing position, all that. So. Ooh, nice, nice big front element. Is that a flat? No, that's got power to it. 
that's definitely definitely going to want some protection. Um, I mean, if you're spending this much on a cine lens, you're probably going to want to throw a clear on there just in case. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. Um, just a, a protective flat. Focus rotation. That's a little heavy. It's not bad. It's very consistent. Nice and smooth, but it is a little heavy. Zoom is also a little bit heavy. I think some motors... I mean, these days they're all so torquey, it's going to be fine, but that just means it's going to put that much more stress on the end stops, because you're going to have that torque cranked way up. Uh, I can't quite read these questions here. It's manual lens. Yes, fully manual. People are sending requests to be in the video. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, it's not inconsistent, which is nice. It's just a little heavy. The iris feels great. I think that's how the, the zoom and the focus should feel. Let's see, we have, I want to say nine blades. Nice circular shape. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, the mount will definitely be interchangeable. Yeah, that's, look at all that movement in the rear group. Actually, I'm going to use my clever new detail view here. See that, that movement? It's pushing a lot of glass, which is probably why it has to have a, a relatively heavy movement. So it's not just that rear group. You can also see the... kind of hard to see from the front. So yeah, mechanically it looks good. Cosmetically it looks great. It's nice and clean. I don't see any contamination in the lens. Um, yeah, this, this lens will go off to um, a technician. It'll go through the QC process and then it'll get put into inventory. Actually, I think all of this first batch is sold. I think they're all going straight to customers. Um, I don't think it's a particularly popular lens. I think it's just been in the pre-order phase for so long. We have quite a few. Um, like I said, it's been over a year since they announced this. In fact, let's throw it on a camera real quick. I just want to see how it covers. morning Johnny and conveniently we have an EF mount already on our Komodo if you were here last weekend you watched me wrap this Komodo now it's all done and functional yeah see that's I mean this lens weighs almost as much if not more than the camera I don't think I have my scale with me. Nope, I think someone took it because we were measuring, uh, we had another, uh, a secret project where we were trying to shave as much weight as possible off of a specific lens. So let's see if this even shows up. I don't know if you guys can see anything there. Let's use the Tokina box as our subject. I don't know if it's going to focus that close, but that'll be a nice test. What is close focus? Close focus is... that's impressive. Like two... Oh, sorry. I misread that. Eh, it's not great. <laughs> Two feet nine inches. Actually, I assume that says two feet nine inches. It's not two point nine, so it's two two feet nine inches. 
Uh, I can't. I, I'd, I'd have to move much farther back, which I don't really have a good setup here for. I'd have to put it in the actual test area. Um, yeah, nothing here is going to be far enough away. So I'll do that another day. We tried that a while back. We had a, a dedicated test setup that we streamed from the camera. Um, it was okay, but it ended up being uh, not so great lens. And then when the lens manufacturer saw it, they weren't too happy that we showed it. But I mean, what do you want us to do? Tell people it's good and then they get it and they have the same problems we saw? That doesn't make sense. So. Uh, I, I'll, I'll probably try and figure out a way to to live stream the actual footage coming out of the camera. But um, actually, you know what? I could have at least tested coverage. Let's do that real quick. You guys can see that easily. Make sure we're in the full sensor. I can't read these comments. How much is... How much is... Is... $4,999, so $5,000 for this lens. It looks like we might actually have stock in EF after all the pre-orders go out. Um, let's see. Coverage is actually fine. Make sure we're at full... Yeah, 6K. We're at full 6K on here. So if you're a Komodo guy, this is a, a not bad lens, I'd say. Yeah, it covers the entire sensor, no problem. That's easy peasy. Which is good. I mean, that's, I think, who this lens is targeted at is sort of the, the small production run and gun need a sort of a, a normal working focal length. Um, nothing crazy long, like a, a five times or a ten times. Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> All right, so you definitely will need good support. No question about that. Hi Matt, what do you think of the Permista zooms? Um, worth it for the price in your opinion? Oh, so, okay, two questions are, so this lens worth it for the price? Well, let's talk about that real quick. Let's see what we would compare it to. So 25 to 75, T29, Super 35. Um, you could, mm, I mean, there's not a whole lot in this price range to compare it to. Focal length wise, you're talking about like, a Canon 30 to uh, uh, 30 to 105, or maybe um, an Optimo 30 to 90. Um, what's the? I'm trying to think of like the lower price, like the Easy, the Andrew Easy 30 to 90. That's a that's a kind of similar zoom range, and that one's about 15 grand. Um, so this being a third the price, I'd say yeah, it's it's a very good lens for the price. However, I know that the first thing that's going to come up, once you get down into this lower price, that sort of sub 5K lens, then you start straddling those productions where people are trying to decide, do I use my you know, Canon L series 24 to 70, or do I use a proper cine lens? And if you're just doing, if you're doing like talking head corporate stuff, locked focus, no movement, no focus pull, nothing, just a straight up image. I don't see any reason to get something like this over a standard Tokina, Tamron, Canon, Sigma, whatever, 28 to 70 photo lens or 24 to 70. Um, if you're looking to take that step up and you need that same focal length and you're pulling focus and you need it to repeat every time and you need proper T-stops, um, and you need to zoom during a shot, anything other than a completely static locked off shot, then I'd say, yes, this is a fantastic upgrade from those photo lenses, um, especially at this price. Um, I think this will be a solid com uh, 
competitor for like the 18 to 35 Sigma, also super 35, also around five, I think it's a little under five. What is that one? 18 to 35 is 40, it's 4,000. So it's a thousand dollars cheaper than this lens, but it's also a much shorter zoom range. So it's a give take. Um, yeah, I, I do think it's worth the price. I think it's a nice lens if you need something in that range for Super 35, definitely. I don't think there's anything else that this directly competes with as far as price, speed, and zoom range. I, I'm actually trying to think of something else. Let me see. The Canon's a little bit longer and it's gonna be much bigger and much heavier and more expensive. The closest thing they have there would be, actually it's right in between the two. It's between the 15 and a half to 47 and the 30 to 105. It's probably closer to the 30 to 105. So yeah, you get a lot more range with the 30 to 105, but it's twice the price. Um, what else could you compare this with? Oh, oh, okay. The DZO, okay, so here's the main competitor, the DZO 20 to 55, also a T28, T2829, same really effectively. The DZO is about half the price of this lens, but it is a shorter zoom range. The DZO is a 20 to 55, this is a 25 to 75, so you get an extra, you know, reasonable length on the long end which, depending on how you shoot, may or may not be where you want that extra zoom, link, zoom range. Um, so that's a strong competitor. However, uh, I will put this on the projector. I will do my proper tests. I can't do that on camera for you guys because there's just no way to get a camera over to the projection room. Um, but I, I strongly suspect that this lens will outperform the DZO optically. So if you're looking for a clean, accurate image, this should perform much better than the DZO. That's not to say the DZO isn't still a good lens, um, but it, it's definitely not meant to be a clean clinical option. It's meant to be something that has a little bit of character, um, you know, a little bit of chromatic aberration, a little bit of distortion. I suspect this will be much cleaner. So I should do some direct comparisons because that's probably the closest competitor. Uh, the Laua Um, that's a, that's, yeah, that's also Super 35. That's a longer zoom range, much longer. Um, so the Um comes in at $5,000, so pretty much the same price. It's a 25 to 100. That's going to be much bigger and much heavier than this lens. So I, I don't know that I would call that. That's, that's a little bit of a stretch in being a direct comparison. Um, but yeah, it, you could compare those two. Um, the Oom um definitely requires a full support, full rig, everything. This one, um, in PL mount, I'd say you could get away with handheld without any additional support. I probably wouldn't hang this EF mount off the camera without additional support. But that was a good one. That was a good recommendation, the Oom. Um. For a little bit more and 10 pounds, you can pick up a Zeiss Variable Prime 29. <laughs> I don't know that I recommend the Variable Primes for anyone. So Kina is great. They got help from ING, oh, Anjani back in the day. Yeah, yeah, they, there was a lot of um, cooperation between Tokina and Anjani for their still stuff. The Instagram feed seems to be somewhere else. Did I start it on the wrong, uh, the wrong account? No. I can't even tell what account it's on. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. For the guy, for the people on Instagram, what, what account is this? <laughs> I hope it's the Duplos Lenses account and not like the Lens Geek or like my personal account. I don't know. We'll see. Um, 
might be a stupid question, but the focal length on the body of the lens, 25 to 35, so that focal length is equivalent to a full frame look or something. No, uh, no, not at all. This, the focal length never ever changes. So if you had a, um, let's say you had a full frame Canon 24 to 70, and you set that Canon lens at 25, and you set this lens at 25, and you put them both on a Komodo, it would be the exact same field of view, give or take a tiny bit, because there's always some difference. Um, this is not an equivalency or anything. 25 to 75 is 25 to 75, period. So the image circle is 36 millimeters, so full frame. No. No, this image circle, uh, yeah, it might be 36 millimeter. Let me pull that up. Full frame image circle is 43.3, .3, so that's not going to be enough. Tech specs. Yeah, 36 millimeter diagonal. So it's going to cover like the Super 35 Plus. Oh, thank you, Johnny. That's very helpful. <laughs> um, that's kind of become the, the requirement. You know, if you want to say that you cover Super 35, it's got to be a little more than what is tradi traditionally considered Super 35. Super 35, in the film days, you know, actual Super 35 film, you needed probably about 32 or 33 millimeter diagonal. Um, these days, because of red and because of airy and all the different variables, and everyone's got a slightly different sensor size, you really do kind of need somewhere closer to 35 or 36 millimeter diagonal, especially with red. The mount is changeable, yes. Um, I haven't tried it yet. I assume it's gonna be the exact same procedure as the other Tokina Cine stuff. You just take out the six or eight screws, um, pull this EF mount off, put a, a sort of a spacer down, and then put the PL mount on. That should be I would say I would I would consider that user swappable. However, keep in mind I have to tell everyone this: you you need to calibrate the back focus, the flange depth. Doesn't matter what shim stack it came with. Doesn't matter if it happens to be lining up in that moment on your camera. You have to calibrate your flange depth. Otherwise, swapping that mount is just going to cause problems. Um. Oh, the Permista impression. Okay, someone asked about the Permista. So I'll, I'll talk about that, but I'll preface by saying it's a completely different beast than what this lens is. The Permista is about as high end of a full frame zoom as you can get. Um, the Permista, let's see, you have the 28 to 100, you have the 25, no, 50 to 130, oh man, I'm losing it. I know it's a 28 to 100, and the 80 to 250, geez. And then the newest one is their wide, is the 19 to 45. So those are proper high-end, you know, your job is on the line, you need the shot, it needs to work, it needs to focus, period. That's what those lenses are for. Would it be an option against a Zeiss Milvis set? I keep printing these, but might have to get a zoom instead. Uh, yeah, I would say, I haven't looked at it on the projector yet, so I don't know, I can't say for sure, but based on Tokina's other recent um, lens releases, like the Vista Primes, like some of the other zooms, um, I wouldn't hesitate to match this to either Sigma Primes, Milvis Primes, CP3s, uh, anything in that sort of field. I think it'll give a relatively similar look. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem. That's, it shouldn't produce any variables that you wouldn't have corrected in post anyway. I think it is... It's almost the same weight as this Komodo with the battery and the monitor with a battery. It's about the same weight, which is, I don't know how else I could sort of relay that to you guys here. I could go find that scale, but I don't want to dig through those desks right now. 
I don't even know where it is. Um, let's see, it's Instagram. I can't even read it. Anything in that mediocre range? I would say that this is a, as far as proper cine lenses go, yeah, I would consider this mediocre. But if you show this to like, a, you know, a photographer that's like just getting into cine, this is leaps and bounds beyond what they're using. This is still gonna outperform, especially mechanically, not necessarily optically, any still photo lens. So mediocre lens is a very relative term. What are the inherent differences in image quality between the Tokina and the DZO film? Um, like I was saying before, the, the, the most obvious differences will be chromatic aberration, spherical aberration, and distortion. The DZO will exhibit all three of those more than this lens, uh, assuming this lens is on par with the rest of the Tokina Cinema ATX lenses that have come out, which I suspect it is. Um, like I said, I haven't put this on the projector yet. I haven't run it through its paces. This is the literally the first uh, proper unboxing of this lens. I, I assume this was the first one in the States. I haven't seen anyone else with them aside from like pre-production units or um, sample units. I know we're talking about this beautiful zoom lens, but what vintage zoom lens covers Super 35 also? All of the vintage. I, I have no problem talking about other lenses. I'm not, he <coughs> I'm not here to talk about just Tokina, so don't, don't hesitate to ask other questions. Um, I'm not an agent of Tokina. I'm not sponsored by Tokina. Um, I mean, when you say vintage, if you're talking about cine lenses, almost all of them until you get to like really, really vintage predating Super 35 and talking about just regular 35. Um, but if you're talking about vintage photo lenses, practically all of them, because vintage for photo is almost entirely full frame and will cover Super 35 no problem. So for photo stuff, like size contacts and Leica R and um, Nikon AI and you know all of those they're, they're all full frame they'll all cover no problem is this a new opt yes this is not a repurposed photo lens this is a through and through cine lens which is also I'm glad you mentioned that I believe the other two ATX um, cinema ATX lenses are Pull those up. I believe those are both repurposed. Yeah, those are both rehoused or, or repurposed photo optics. I'm fairly certain that this is a from the ground up cine lens. I might look for a rental house for this lens to test it out before I buy it. Oh yeah, don't don't ever buy a lens without testing it. <laughs> um, I don't think any rental houses will have this yet because, like I said, it, it's literally fresh off the boat for the airplane. And not many lens manufacturers use um, ships or freight to transport stuff anymore. It's all done by air. Nobody wants their lens, their delicate cine lens, sitting on a, a boat in the middle of salty ocean for two or three weeks. Does this cut well with the zines? Mm, yes and no. The zines are gonna, the, the zines vary. I've talked about this quite a bit before, but they, they vary quite a bit from lens to lens within the set. So for example, the zine 24 millimeter is nowhere near as good as say the zine 50 millimeter. So it's hard to say it'll cut well because there's such a, a variation between the primes. But all things considered, it would probably cut reasonably well. 
I would love to see either Tokina or Sigma would make a huge zoom range cine zoom one day, like the old 25 to 250. Uh, yeah, but there's so many other brands doing that. Canon has their new 25 to 250, which is going to be very hard to beat. It is expensive. It's about 40 some odd thousand. Um, but optically, it's a fantastic lens, and it's smaller than any other 25 to 250 I've ever seen. You have the the vintage Cook, the Ingenue. Um, I guess that's just really those two: the Cook and the Ingenue, 25 to 250, and both of those are bigger and heavier than the new Canon. So I don't think anyone can do better than what Canon did with their 25 to 250. Um, and then you have a couple other sort of intermediate ones. You've got the Fujinon 30. Uh, no, 25 to 300, and then the Airy Allura, what was that focal length? Oh, it's gone. I think the Allura was a 25 to... 25 to 250 or 300, I can't remember, but it's about the same thing as the Fujinon. Um... So I don't think Sigma or Tokina has any need to do what other companies are already doing. I, 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 would, I would actually advise them not to do that. There's no need to repeat what others have already done. You might have talked about this, but how do you think this will compare to the 28 to 70 Angie, Angie, Ingenue design? Mm, it won't. That, that Ingenue Tokina lens is 20, 30 years old. I don't think it will compare at all. Um, this is, like I said before, I suspect, just from what I saw on the camera just now and what I will see on the projector, I suspect this will be much cleaner and more accurate. Whereas the vintage Ingenue Tokina, um, it's very popular because of its vintage flaws, its flawed image quality. It's got you know, that edge fall off for the focus. It's got a little bit of spherical and chromatic aberration. It has that character, it's vintage character. This will not have vintage character. Uh, and that's not a bad thing. It's it's a blank slate. You can do whatever you want to it with filters and post and all that stuff. Uh, let me check Instagram. Thank you, David. David's here. Yay. 45 to 250. That's the one. I think that's the one I was thinking of. That's not really apples to apples then. The 25 to 300 is the, the Fujinon I was thinking of. That's kind of like the the newer version of a, a 10 times. Um, and then Canon themselves have their 30 to 300 as well. It's kind of like a 25 to 250, but even that one, it's much bigger and much heavier. The, the new 25 to 250 Canon, the Cine Servo, um, I don't think any, I don't think Sigma or Tokina could make a better lens than what Canon did with their current 25 to 250. Would you say the ATX lens series are the best cine zooms at their price point? Uh, no. No, I don't think any lens is the best of any price point because it depends on what you're shooting and how you're shooting. And I've said it a thousand times on the mod stream and talking about vintage lenses and at, at lectures for schools and stuff, there is no such thing as a bad lens. There's just different lenses for different purposes, which by that logic implies there is no best lens. There's just different lenses that are good at what they do. Um, I think the Cinema ATX line is definitely good for a certain type of production, but for some people, they may get a better result for their project using something like the DZO Pictor zooms or the Sigma Cine high speed zooms. Um, and I'm not just saying that to be neutral or anything or to not upset other manufacturers because I have no problem pissing off manufacturers, apparently. Um, but it's dead true. There is no such thing as the best lens, there is no such thing as a bad lens. Might have been asked, how much does it weigh? I didn't actually weigh it, um, but it's it's hefty. <laughs> um, maybe I should go find the scale. I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna go find the, uh, well, 
Actually, David, if you're still here, maybe you know where it is. <laughs> I think David had used it. I need to just get another scale to put in the back. Um, actually, I have the spec. I could just tell you based on um, the actual spec sheet. This lens weighs four and a half pounds. In fact, maybe it's in the, the manual here. There's a whole spec sheet. No, maybe not. I thought there was. Yeah. You can't read that. Weight. There we go. The EF model, four and a half pounds. PL one slightly less at 4.3. E mount because it has a giant stainless steel tube at the back is 4.7 so there you go these are always fun how to use zoom pins screw on the supplied blue zoom pin into any hole 8 in zoom ring and you can operate focusing and zooming easily. No, you can't. That's a lie. That's an absolute lie. <laughs> that is wrong. There are, there are no holes for the focus, so that is inaccurate. I'm gonna scratch that out. Use care when screwing on the zoom pin. The pin must be aligned straight with the corresponding holes. If not, the threaded hole could get stripped or damaged. Yes, that's true. I like this too. When attaching and detaching the lens, be careful not to drop the lens to avoid impact damage. Did you guys know that? Is that uh, is that required reading for the manual? Focusing, this is a manual focus lens only. Focus by turning the focus ring until the image is in focus or set the desired focus distance on the distance scale. For the exposure mode settings, follow the instruction in the manual provided with your camera. <laughs> so nothing to read here. Interesting. So there's your weights. Those are hard numbers from the manufacturer. About to get another thread of a lot. <laughs> no, uh, Tokina wouldn't do that. Tokina and I have a very good relationship. Um, they know that I I'm not I'm not a sales guy. I'm not a a you know I'm not that rep behind the counter that is required to say good things about this lens. If I don't like something about it, like the position of these holes or the fact that the manual says that there's focus holes for the zoom rod or the fact that it is pretty heavy or whatever. I could say whatever I want because I'm honest about these things. I'm not obligated to, to speak highly of them. I'm not a, uh, I'm not an influencer that needs to collect a check after this video or something. If somebody from Tukina is watching Johnny, then great, they can fix that manual because <laughs> that's awkward. Um, all right, I'm probably gonna wrap it up. You know, I did have things, I did have the nitpicks. Like this sticker is stupid, why is that there? Why does this need to be a separate badge? Why not just engrave Tokina on the lens? Why does the serial number have to be a removable badge? That's a bad idea, because then you could swap the serial numbers if it gets stolen or something, or you could just remove it all together if it gets stolen. Um, I will not hesitate to give my, my feedback on lenses like this. I hope that you guys appreciate my honesty. I hope that it is valuable to you. Um, if you want the, the te tech rep spiel and you want to hear all the best things about this lens and all the BS that comes in the brochures, then you can go to a, a regular dealer that'll give you that junk. Someone's at the door. I'm not kidding. Hello? Oh, you could just leave it on the table there. Thank you. I should go.
go get that. But I'm not gonna. Um, all right, let's uh, set this guy aside. You did say it's worth the price, so that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say it's worth the price. I said every lens is worth something to, the, to a different person. Uh, to clarify, who said that? Johnny, to clarify, this lens will not be worth it for someone that doesn't need any of this, that doesn't need a full manual focus with manual zoom and all, you know, if you're doing, like I said, some of that talking head corporate stuff, you may just need a simple autofocus still lens. So to those people, no, it's not worth the price. So I feel like if the economy goes down, all those lenses are going to get harder to get. Yeah, I don't know about that. From a service standpoint, how's Tokina's inner design? Tokina's inner designs are, uh, I'd say, relatively complex, but not bad. Um, they're well made, they're consistent. We have a very good relationship with Tokina, so we can get parts quickly and easily, which goes a long way. Um, I have nothing negative to say about the build quality on this and serviceability. Just a random question, Matt. Do you think the cine market is getting bigger or smaller? Oh, it's definitely getting bigger. Definitely. There's just so much more content being shot. I mean, compared to like, compared to when I started doing this 20 some odd years ago, you were shooting commercials, maybe you were doing music videos or feature films. And nowadays you've got so much content you know, corporate videos, music videos, talking head stuff, documentary stuff, like every streaming platform. Uh, there's just so much, even the whole YouTube crowd, there's just, there's an abundance of content and it's all being shot on cinema gear, which I think is amazing. Okay, actually, let me go grab that, that mail real quick. I will be right back. All right. Yeah, but I don't know why the camera companies are so worried. Camera companies are worried because for the longest time they were invested heavily in point and shoot and um, antiquated technology. So they have reason to be worried, but the, the motion picture ones shouldn't be worried. Sony with their Cine line, Airy, uh, Black Magic, they're all doing great. So this, what is this? This is a 17 millimeter. Oh, just, okay, so here's some quick, quick background. Where did it go? So there's a couple different names that come with this brand. On our website, in the lens section, we have it listed as ZY Optics. ZY Optics is short for Zong Yi Optics. Um, they call themselves ZY Optics from time to time, so we went with that. But the proper name is Zong Yi. It's just harder to say for Americans. So we went with ZY. Some people probably read it as Zai. I don't know. Anyway, they've been making lenses for a long time, and they had their Mitocon line for photo lenses. And we kept poking them and saying, hey, we love this glass. Why don't you make a cine version? It's already fully manual. It's already, um, you know, super high speed, super 35. Just change the housing and there you go. So, and, and we were modding a lot of them. So we thought, why not just have them make it from the factory? So they listened, which was great. Um, and this is the result. You get three lenses currently. 
Actually, this one might be micro four thirds only. Let's pull it up here. I need to update the specs on these on the website. Yeah, okay. So the 17 and the 25 are micro four thirds only. It's a hair. Um, the 35 is super 35, and then the yet to be released 50 millimeter is full frame. Let me change this here. Okay, the impressive part about these is that they are right there. Let's do the quickie. It is a T1.0, which means it's an F0.95. So that's not super uncommon for micro four thirds stuff. We've seen that a lot. Um, we've seen it from a couple different companies. SLR Magic has some super fast stuff. Miticon has some fast stuff. There's a couple other companies that use this same factory and rebrand it, like IBE or uh, I can't remember. There's a handful of them. They re repurposed a lot of the Speedmaster stuff. Uh, so I wanted to just go over this real quick because it is a different body, different housing, but most for the most part, the same mechanical and optical design. So right away, right off the bat, I don't know if you guys can hear that. That's that whole front housing. It's just a little loose. Not not super great. It's just how these lenses are. There's a little bit of a a little play in the iris at the very end. Tons of focus marks. That I like. Look at all those marks. Nice rotation. It's about a 300 degree uh, sorry, a 180 degree rotation, which is fine. It's respectable. But nice, clean, simple marks. Nothing, nothing weird. Nothing fancy. Same on the iris. Equal distance, which means this iris was made for this lens. It's not just a stock iris, but you've got perfect spacing all the way. It's not crammed up at the at the closed side. Um, the mount. This is. This is nickel plated brass. This is not steel, which is kind of disappointing. But I get it. But that's to be expected. Um, it's not super clean on the outside or I suspect the inside. Yeah, I mean there's just some some light dust and some cleaning marks. Nothing major. It's, it's about what I would expect. I should clarify, it's about what I expect for a lens that costs $450. This is a $450 lens. Sorry, I switched the frame. Can you see it better now? Um, that's, to me, that's unbelievable. I can't even buy the raw materials for this lens here in the US for $450. It's mind boggling how cheap this is. So for that price, I'm perfectly willing to accept that little bit of looseness, that sort of spongy iris, and a little bit of cleaning marks. I mean, you have to sort of, you can't expect a Zeiss Master Prime for $450. So tailor your expectations. Um, and let's face it, when you're shooting at T1, you're not going to see those smudges. You're not going to see any dust. It's going to be beautiful and dreamy. Um, I have not shot with this specific one. This is micro four thirds. Um, I should throw it on a GH4 and see what I get. That, that bothers me a little bit. The amount of space between the witness mark and the actual focus scale 
It's a little large. That, that's a little unnecessary. That's a design oversight. That could have been fixed. So you look at this, there's practically no gap here. You've got, you know, maybe two thousands or something like that. And here it's just a massive gaping hole. <laughs> so. Or black magic. Yeah, this would be perfect on a black magic. So I'll put that one there. Oh, and they come with these cute little leather boxes. I can't imagine actually storing a lens in here long term, but it's nice. Um, this foam is the super dense closed cell stuff. I do not like this for, for shipping lenses. It's too hard, it's too dense, but yeah. So in that same line, also micro four thirds. You know what, I'll probably just skip, well, I'll look at it real quick. Um, yes, Johnny, the, the 35 millimeter will cover Super 35. In fact, that's the one, uh, I'm gonna unbox a brand new one, but I have one of my own, both the photo version that I use on my Fuji camera and the Cine version in RF mount that I put on the Komodo, which is an absolute dream. I love it. In fact, last weekend, that's the one that I was putting the stickers on, um, which is not the one that I'm unboxing. This is not a full frame lens, no. These are all, this one, the one, the one that I just looked at is micro four thirds. This one, I believe is also micro four thirds. We're gonna find out. Yeah, I can tell already, this mount. So nobody makes, if the lens comes in a micro four thirds mount, there's a good chance it's designed. Oh yeah, there's no way that covers Super 35. In fact, let's check the manual, see what it says. The ILDC lens instruction. Wow, this is like a whole story. Thank you for using lens produced by Zong Yi Optics. Before you use the lens, please read the instruction carefully and thoroughly. If you encounter any problems, feel free to contact us, and the information is written at the back of the instructions or contact the distributors. That's me. I guess I'm supposed to stamp my agent information here. Uh-oh, do not dismantle or disassemble the products. Uh, agree to disagree. Currently, there are two main series lens of Zongyi Optics, Speedmaster series distinguished in large aperture and Creator series featured in high cost performance. Both are manual focus and manual aperture adjustment and manual lens without transferring signals to the camera bodies. Lens installation. Taking off the rear caps, rear, the, sorry, taking off the ear lens caps, then aim the red dot, I'm, I'm reading this verbatim, then aim the red dot pot in the lens mount to the anchor point in the body mount. Inserting the lens into the camera, rotate the lens as the same direction you install the lens. When you hearing the tick sound from the camera body, it means the lens is in the right spot and could be used. Usage. Manual lens have different operational approaches in different ILDCs. In this, in this instruction, the usage of Zongyi Optics ILDC lens is a Sony A series, Fuji FX series, and Micro Four Thirds would be introduced. At the same time, please read the manual lens usage part in the instruction. Okay, so this is obviously, th this manual, this, this whole instruction thing is just sort of repurposed from their photo lens. So see, this is why it gets so confusing for people, because even right here, Zongyi lens made by Shenyang Zongyi Optics Technology Co. Limited. 
So there's just so many layers. A lot of people think that Mitocon is the, the lens maker, and then nope, it's actually Zhang Yi. But Zhang Yi's not the maker, it's actually Shen Yang Zhang Yi Optics Technology Co. Limited. Oh, a five year warranty. That's impressive, actually. That's, I think that's the longest warranty I've seen on a Chinese lens. In guarantee period, if such situation happened, follow the below items. Due to improper use such as falling, watering, improper saving, repairing or disassembling by yourself or others, damages caused artificially are not included in warranty. Natural disasters like fire, earthquake are also not included in warranty. <laughs> Inside lens cleaning is not included in warranty. Please inquire more relative costs with after sales service personnel. Interesting. I do appreciate a good instruction manual. So, let's see if we get the same, yeah, it's that same, I don't know, can, I don't know if this picks up. Focus on this one's better. Front housing is still a little loose. I bought the three lens set from you on a flyer because they were so affordable to use with Blackmagic 4K. And haven't been disappointed. Not an everyday set, but great for a right project. Just need a 50. Nice. Nice, Thomas. The 50 is coming. The 50 should be out uh, actually like any day now. The 50 was supposed to begin shipping like two weeks ago, I think. Um, so we should have that really soon. That I think the 50 is probably the one I'm most excited for because it will come in EF and PL which is kind of the standard. Um, I really, really like the 35 because it comes in RF. You can put it directly on the Komodo, which is awesome. You don't need an adapter. Um, but I think that that 50 is going to be an absolute dream. So again, nice, clean. There is no gap on this one. If you look at that difference. I don't know if that was assembled wrong or if it's just a different design. But this is a nice, tiny gap between the scale and the witness. Also 180 degree rotation, which is nice. I feel bad for companies like like Sigma, when they released their Cine Primes and the Zooms, they got so much flack for the focus scale only being 180 degrees. And then like three years later, everyone realized, oh, I guess that's actually pretty good because now we don't have to crank the focus a bunch of times. and for the people that were using a, a remote system and it gets mapped for one full rotation anyway, that's the same as doing 180. It's the exact same thing. Nobody's doing 360, like you can't do that. So Sigma caught so much flack for putting a 180 degree scale on their lenses and now it's like desirable. All right, and then the last one which I think is so far the, the kicker in the set. Not a fan of this packaging. They, they definitely like squished this cardboard wrapper over the, the clasp. They should have just shipped it like this. Like that's fine. Will the 50 millimeter also come in micro four thirds? I don't think so. I highly doubt it because it's a larger format. It covers full frame. Um, but there's absolutely no reason you couldn't use an EF or PL two micro four thirds adapter. Oh, that's snug. That's the one. That's. So still, focus isn't perfect. I don't expect it to be. It's not, it's not that kind of lens. It's, I think this one is also 
only like 500 bucks. Yeah, $450 for this one. The lubrication on the iris is fine, it's not bad. It's pretty clean. Look at that glass though, that's beautiful. Look at the size of that aperture. Yeah, you can't get a good view. There you go. That's a lot of glass. T1. Same nickel plated brass mount, it looks like. Nice clean machining, nice anodizing on the whole lens. The whole thing is metal, there's no plastic bits. So it's definitely not the finest quality ever, but for $450 T1 Super 35 coverage, it's hard to argue with that. Um, I think the biggest takeaway from something like this is the fact that it's so affordable. If enough people jump on something like this and the, the big manufacturers like Sigma and Zeiss and Tokina, if they take notice that something like this is selling well, then we'll get more higher quality versions of something like this from the big manufacturers. And it'll sort of trickle up. So on four thirds mount, the FOV will be, the FOV won't change. The 50, uh, so Harry, your question about the 35. If you have, like what, tell me what 35 millimeter focal lengths you have currently for micro four thirds, if any. You must have like a something, whether it's Panasonic or Leica even. None. Okay. <laughs> let's pretend that you had a, let's say you had a, uh, I don't know, let's say you had a Panasonic 35 millimeter micro four thirds lens. That 35 millimeter Panasonic lens, okay, the Leica, 35 millimeter Leica, it would be an almost identical field of view to this 35. Doesn't matter what format the lens is designed for, the only thing that matters is what format you're using it on. So if you wanted to compare that field of view on your Blackmagic Micro Four Thirds format sensor to full frame, then yes, you need to do the math, you need to do the crop factor math and figure out where it's gonna end up as far as an equivalency goes. But all 35 millimeter lenses will look the same on that black magic because that crop factor is a result of the camera, not the lens. So I believe these will also go through quality control. I don't think they have yet. So um, quick plug for do close stuff. So some of that stuff I saw, I didn't look into these super carefully, but when these go through quality control here at the shop, what'll happen is the technician will check a whole list of things on the lens. And if anything doesn't fit, anything you know gets a negative or a fail, pass fail, um, then it just gets kicked back to the factory. So for example, who was saying, Thomas was saying that he bought the set of Miticon lenses he got a good set, or at least as good as this manufacturer can do. And the ones that re we rejected went to other dealers and they're just gonna sell them to people that aren't, you know, that don't care about the quality. It's also crazy to think about the size and weight of this. You know, it's a T1, so if you think of like the Vantage T1 primes that are probably probably five times the size and weight of this lens, it's a little mind-boggling.
All right, I think that pretty much does it. Any other lenses? I don't think there's much else that's new. Um, I was hoping, if any of you were here last week and you probably caught that little hint that I dropped about um, another new lens coming from a different manufacturer, this was not that. There is still something that I am very excited about that I have not been able to get yet. I haven't been able to talk about yet. Um, so I will definitely be doing another one of these soon when that lens is available. Uh, but there's not a whole lot else that's new. Maybe the Fujinon, the Primista, but that's kind of hard to show. Um, that's that's like, you know, yay big. Will the 50mm in PL fit that fourth slot in the lens case? Uh, it should. Let me pull up that case. I don't have a picture of the case. <laughs> um, I believe that's exactly what that slot is for. I'm not positive though. They've, they've been giving us very little details on the 50 as far as delivery goes. And they're trying to clear up a bunch of that stuff. Is this all pre-NAV stuff? Uh, it should, yeah, it definitely should be before NAV. NAV is in what, October, I think? Uh, that other lens that I'm talking about that I'm pretty excited about, that should be in the next, like, couple months. I guess that would be around uh, NAV. Um, yeah, that's actually a good question for, let me see if there's any other... these compared to the Leica R in terms of color, contrast, and quality? Uh, that's a hard comparison. Anytime you have a lens that's a T1, an f.95, it's just such a different look altogether. Um, like I've said previously, I've shot extensively with the 35 millimeter on my Fuji camera, and I, I, I wouldn't hesitate to intercut footage from that 35 millimeter and a Leica R with a little bit of tweaking. The the 35 millimeter Miticon is gonna have quite a bit more chromatic aberration until you stop down to something more similar to a Leica R, like F2 maybe. Um, but wide open on all three of these, there is going to be chromatic aberration. There's no way around that. And you have to expect that, it's a T1, come on. Uh, so yeah, I, I would not hesitate to intercut Leica R footage with the Miticon with a bit of special handling, so to speak. Let me see if there's other questions. I can't really scroll, it's hard for me to read it, but um, quick question for both streams, YouTube and Instagram. Uh, is anybody going to Cine Gear? Um, we're trying to sort of gauge what we're gonna do we have a booth, we've signed up, but we don't know in what capacity because it's just so up in the air. Nobody really knows. I think most manufacturers are in the same boat. Nobody really knows what attendance is gonna be like or what people are doing. Okay, Thomas says I am, good. Let's see what Instagram is saying. Just coming in, what lenses are these? We looked at the Tokina 25 to 75 and the Miticon Speedmaster lenses, 17, 25, and 35. Here, I'll put this back here just so it's not a blank table. <laughs> I'll just watch it roll. It will not roll off the bench. A, I have a lip right here on my rubber mat, and B, this support foot will not let it go any farther than that. It's going to be in prison. Yeah, yeah, It's a, they moved it from Paramount to the Los Angeles Convention Center, which is why so many people are like, eh, I don't know. I might be out of town shooting a movie in Georgia. Hey man, if, you're, if you've got work, that is a priority. Take your work, <laughs> take the gig. Definitely, nobody would fault you for that. Yeah, we're trying to figure out, our booth might just be like, a bunch of pamphlets that people can take. 
They sold out of the mats. Who did, Amazon? No way. There's a whole bunch of different styles that you can get. I mean, I get it. You probably don't want the one that has the dog paw on it. <laughs> um, here, I'll put. A, I'll drop a link for another one. It's the exact same thing, just a different brand, and they have a bunch of different colors, which is kind of cool. Um, Hang on here. Matt's Matt. I should just start branding these. We have another uh, another project that we're working on. Another product, uh, a service, a technician product. That uh, it's not it's not even close to being done. But some of you guys might be interested if you're fellow lens geeks and DIY. Um, I'm trying to get the correct link here. I might try other colors too. That might be kind of fun. Oh yeah, this one's in stock. If you have Prime, it's free delivery, all that. Here, I'll drop it in the chat. I'm calling it a rubber bench mat, but it's not. It's a dog food mat. <clears throat> but just don't tell anyone. It's our secret. It's the mod stream secret. Oh, I could get a green one and do like a green screen. You guys can fiddle with that every weekend. Mess with it. There's a white one. White might be nice. Nice contrast. Uh, let's see. So I'm looking to get the entry level anamorphics. I was looking at either LS seventy. I don't know what that is. LS. Are getting the Siri twenty four through fifty and maybe the seventy five. I shoot on the E two C. Um. I mean the Siri stuff is fantastic for entry, like entry level anamorphic. Uh, I don't necessarily like the the squeeze ratio for the series stuff, but it's kind of hard to argue at that price. Oh, the Panasonic. Okay. I was wondering what you're using on the work mat. Yeah, this is... I, all of the technicians here... One of these days I'll do like an actual service area tour. Um like a behind the scenes because this one bench is just sort of a makeshift thing I did during quarantine um, you know it's my norm normally this is my engineering space this is the desk I sit at to design uh, and I just sort of set it up with the cameras and everything but the actual service area where we have you know, let's see four five six seven eight we have nine nine technician benches um, I use different mats uh, this is sort of a replaceable one. I can just pick it up and toss it around. But uh, they have a, a slightly more permanent style. We use a much heavier duty rubber just so that it lasts longer. We are hiring, yes, Johnny. We are hiring a, a junior technician position um, and a full, full technician position. Um, need a software engineer. I don't at the moment, but you never know. <laughs> We had a couple of things that I, I contemplated reaching out to some software engineers for uh, um, test equipment and sort of managing the protocols between cameras. I don't know if that's a software engineer thing or if that's an electrical engineer thing. Anyway, but yes, anybody that is interested in getting into this field, uh, send go to, what is the link? Let me find it here.
There you go. Uh, I know Instagram can't see it, but it's duclose.tv slash jobs. Um, that's where you can apply. And we're still looking. We, we may have filled one of the positions. I don't want to say too much because I think there's some HR stuff there, HIPAA stuff there. Um, but definitely apply because we also work very closely with all the rental houses around town and even some of the manufacturers that have offices in town and uh, we usually ask applicants first but if we don't end up hiring you then there's tons of opportunity with other companies and we just sort of pass those names around uh, so definitely apply there and it'll sort of make its way with your permission obviously it'll make its way I know of at least half a dozen other opportunities at the moment. If I lived out west, I would love to be a junior tech. Yeah, that's the thing. We got a bunch of applications from people overseas, and I, 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 I can't, it's a, you have to be here in LA. It has to be an in-person thing. There's no remote opportunity for this type of work. Anyways, I think that'll wrap it up. Um, I just wanted to show you guys that new stuff. I will work on a way to show the projector stuff so that when I actually test lenses, you can see that, um, or maybe on the <coughs> on the camera. Um, I just don't have a I don't have a convenient space to do that in at the moment. So we'll see. So yeah, have a good weekend, and I will probably be back here next Saturday.
Thank you.